Hi everyone, this is Narcissist Red Flags. They're always presenting themselves as the victim. And I feel like this is a core red flag within narcissistic personality disorder and most, if not all, of the cluster B personality disorders, in particular borderline, narcissist, and um, histrionic. Sociopaths tend to do this as a direct play, like a conscious play in terms of figuring out what they need to present in order to get what they want. But I feel as though, and from my experiences and my studies, that narcissists tend to be more, uh, they tend to believe in the moment that they are actually the victim. And because their narcissism is so pathological, this leads to partially using this as a manipulation technique or tactic sometimes, but also truly believing that they are the victim, which usually when you see this red flag come up, it tends to be in situations where it's almost absurd uh, where they or where they're projecting. So claiming that they're the victim um, in certain situations where nobody else or a non-disordered non-pathological person would see themselves as a victim in that in that particular situation. And from my experience, for example, with my ex-husband, um, projecting. Projecting onto me the things that he himself was doing that now looking back, I see, wow, I really was a victim. I think in the moment, I often knew something was wrong, clearly we went to therapy and I took a lot of the blame and I knew he had issues, for sure I knew this. But on the same token, there was a lot of times where he was so covert and manipulated the situation so um, so kind of sneaky and so um, insinuously and pervasively that he would literally project onto me the things that he was doing himself, which now looking back, like I said, I see, wow, I really was a victim. But he would claim victim, and he would cry abuse in sometimes the most ridiculous situations. Um, for example, there was a day when he had uh, blown me off, and we had not spent any time together for several days. And throughout the course of our relationship, he would constantly be saying he was going to move in and then not move in. And then we had, we each had our own place, but we would, we would, you know, live, sometimes we would live our lives together and sometimes not. Finally, I had, was so sick of it and, um, of his issues that always quote unquote came up that I myself had taken a break and then we broke up because it was just too much. And he basically, um, discarded me in a very kind of obscure fashion because, well, not really for narcissists. Um, they tend to um, beg you to stay if you're going to leave them, and then they'll just discard you like you you were never even a part of their lives. It's a very bizarre thing, and anyone who's been through it knows what it is. It's enormously painful as well. But going back to presenting themselves as a victim and this particular red flag, you know, so in that situation, I remember him blowing me off and me being hurt by it. And because I gave him, I guess, supposedly some attitude towards it, um, I mean, he was serious. I mean, turned into a, well, he presented himself to be himself to be serious anyway. He went off about how I'm abusive to him because I get, I got mad because when he blows me off and I take it personally when it doesn't have anything to do with me, I just kind of manipulating the whole situation. I mean, looking back now, it's so totally ridiculous and absurd. And I almost sometimes can, can't believe that I actually um, fell for his manipulation techniques. But as you well know, if you've been, if you've had narcissistic abuse done to you uh, or you're going through it, that it's so incredibly easy to fall into this trap that they lay. And I find that the partners of narcissists, so the non-narcissistic partner or the non-disordered partner, the personality of people that sociopaths, psychopaths, and narcissists go for tend to be on that more giving, 
compromising diplomatic side. I know some people like to use codependent, that narcissists tend to find codependent, and Ross uh, Rosenberg um, tends to make videos talking about this human magnet syndrome and that a codependent is always um, drawn inherently to a narcissist. Okay, I understand his psychology behind it, and I understand that there is some truth to that in certain situations, you know, Granted, I could come up with theories and find some situations in relationships or within people to fit my theory, okay? So I just like to put that out there as well. But, you know, just as an FYI, yes, if you want to look at codependency as this very broad um, spectrum, you know, non-disorder type of, you know, still functional, but, it ha- I, you know, that's the thing about codependency, It's labeled, so many people are labeled, and I've done some videos about this, and I feel like that label is thrown around, and in such a careless fashion, and there is no consistency to it. Versus like narcissistic personality disorder, there's very clear red flags, there's very clear traits. Narcissists tend to follow the same pattern. I mean, it's amazing how you could replace my name and my nurse's, my ex-husband's name with almost anybody who's been doing videos, regardless if they're male or female, and it could be almost the exact story. You could be describing my ex-husband because their playbook is so, and their traits are so consistent within that framework of, you know, this particular disorder. On the other hand, when you look at codependency, this idea of codependency, which I personally don't buy into, and I've talked about, I won't go into details, but it's such a, um, you know, a completely generic and generalized term that when you look at codependence, on the other hand, or people that have been quote unquote labeled as codependent, and I, you know, was quote unquote labeled by a therapist and I took it on and I thought if I accepted it and Narcissist Free talks about this a lot too, that I started to accept it and go to CODA meetings and read books and so on and so forth, only later to realize I actually wasn't codependent. I was myself, I never had these issues previously, and a person who was lying and manipulative came into my life. All right, so I just like to throw that out there in terms of this idea of victim. And one other thing I do want to say in terms of victim, and not to go off too far from the red flag, because nurses is definitely a clear red flag is the victim mentality. Often, like I said, they use it to get what they want, to paint the picture they want, and to manipulate you. Because if they can cry the the word abuse, and they can say they're the victim, kind of preempts it. So that it's hard for you then to come back and say, no, 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 you're, you're, you're abusing me. No, 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 I'm the victim. So they use this as a very clear, concise, uh, almost rational manipulation technique. But I just want to say in terms of codependency that when just because somebody was able to lie to you and manipulate you, that you only saw what you were able to see, which is called being human, we're not psychic. Just because you had a framework of what the world was like. And look, my framework for the most part, was upheld until I was 34 years old. That in the context of romantic relationships and people marrying you and being with you, that they're by far and large, for the most part, honest. Even when my ex-boyfriend of many years had cheated on me, he did so in reaction to some core, you know, deficiencies in our intimacy and connection. It made sense. In some kind of way. I wasn't happy about it. I ended the relationship because of it. But it wasn't a narcissist. It wasn't like this. It wasn't like the relationship with my narcissistic ex. So before you take on the label of codependency, I do want to say that I think it's important that you reevaluate what that means and what you're actually taking on. Also, somebody had recently... Oh, uh, Another YouTuber by the name of Randy Andretti was talking about 
the idea of people buying into the victim mentality and owning the word victim or the concept of being a victim so deeply that they're not able to heal and get out of it. And I'm not going to make a judgment on that, although I see her point and maybe agree to it to a certain degree. But I think it's important, just like the narcissist uses that tool of always crying victim, always playing the victim, just like they use the tool, I think it's important that even non-disordered people, even people who were victims, because yes, every person who's endured narcissistic abuse was a victim, absolutely. But I think it's important that we not, that we, anybody, not use victim to manipulate other people or themselves. I know that sounds odd, but in some ways, people who were involved with narcissists, have been, especially those that were with them for many years and very close to and in love with the narcissist, they can sometimes take on this victimhood mentality because they were manipulated by the narcissist for so long that they're still you know, unconsciously playing out this abused person and persona. And one of the healing, one of the goals in healing should be to shed, shed off the, shed off all of the, the exterior and the persona and the idea and the ideals and the attribute in which the narcissist projected onto us and gave us. They may have always cried to be the victim, but if you find yourself reveling, uh, um, wallowing, I know that's not the word I'm looking for, staying stuck maybe is better. When you can't even help it, staying stuck in a feeling of being victimized. This is a clue that the low energy level or the low, lower than them, the low self-esteem that the narcissist dumped onto you and dumped on to create your persona to to themselves, to you, to other people. This might be a clue that you're still stuck in what the narcissist created. I think it's important to remember that the, the narcissist only created this idea of you. None of it is you. They create the concept of who you are according to them and they project it elsewhere into other people and to you in order to achieve what they want. Not because it's true. So I think it's important that just like the narcissist's red flag, right, of them being a narcissist is that they're always the perpetual victim when clearly they aren't. Even though you are the victim, I think it's important we not take on that role, that we not get caught up in the same type of mentalities that the narcissist also spews. But then again, narcissists the red flags that they take on, there's a spectrum of these personas, these behaviors, these ideologies or mentalities or actions. And we all do some of these things on a very low level of a spectrum. And when we're looking at someone and we're trying to evaluate, are they a narcissist? Remember that we're looking at a spectrum and it's a collection of red flags and traits that you're looking for. 99% of narcissists that I've known or spoken to, people who've been with narcissists or known personally, have a very large amount of these red flags. The ones that I'm producing or the, or the general ones that I've seen on blogs, on credible websites, on other YouTube channels, such as narcissist support. So, um, yeah, I think it's important that we remember that and we became become vigilant and remember that everybody exists on the spectrum but when you're evaluating a narcissist you probably already know they're a narcissist before you ever even look at one red flag 
the red flags are basically just validating it for you. Because most people that discover they're with a narcissist, like a true pathological narcissist, and they endured true narcissistic abuse, they know it before they know it. Right? They know it inside of them before they know it intellectually. All right, everybody, I hope this helps. And I'll see you soon for my next red flag. Bye.